story will make your heart leap right out of your mouth. It's the one I used to tell every Halloween back in Sydney. There's this girl, about my age, walking along a country road, very much like the one we're near right now. Yeah, I can see how a country road might scare a city girl. Just wait. The girl is nervous because it's getting dark and the strange noises are coming from the bush. <gasps> Scrub nervous. This girl is terrified. When suddenly, a car pulls up and the driver offers her a lift. The girl, relieved, jumps in. Oh no, Dad and me. You should never order get into cars with strangers. You are so right, Flick. Because as soon as the girl gets in, the driver locks all the doors and says, I'm an escaped convict and your nightmare is just beginning. <laughs> and the girl says, what a coincidence, so is yours. And she pulls off her face to reveal she's an alien. <laughs> cool. me. He was out in the bush late one night. This can be Steve. Oh, I've never been in this part of the bush before. When he suddenly heard a strange noise. <laughs> no, it was more a kind of grrrr, grrrr, grrrr. Steve walked towards the noise and looked through the bushes to see. A giant monster with really shiny eyes and a loud roar and 16 wheels coming straight towards him. Roar! Wait a minute. 16 wheels? Shining eyes? That sounds like a semi-trailer. My turn now. Have any of you heard about the witch of Wackerville? According to police files, she was this bizarre old lady who lived on the outskirts of Wackerville, where she'd creep up on kids in the dark and say, Anyone for a cuppa? <laughs> what you screaming for, Slaytons? My tea's not that bad. <laughs> Actually, it's non-existent, Aunt Agnes. Oh, that's because I'm all out of tea and it seemed pointless to waste the water. I'm sorry we screamed, but we were telling each other scary stories. It's Halloween this weekend. Well, if you want scary stories, darlings, you can't beat... <gasps> oh, whack of old bunyip! According to local legend, Wackerville has its own bunyip. A big monster with a horse's tail, seal's flippers, and walrus tusks. Delicious. Anyway, the bunyip lurks near the riverbed, and at night, its blood curdling cry can be heard as it eats anyone who comes near. <gasps> Bunyips are a myth. No, they're not. Yes, they are. They're a dreamtime legend swallowed by early settlers who thought that every strange noise or weird animal was a bunyip. <laughs> I can't believe country people are so gullible. First they think semi-trailers are monsters, and now they think bunyips are real. Yeah, well city people are gullivers too. They'd believe someone had walked on the moon if you told them. But someone has walked on the moon. <laughs> yeah, as if. <laughs> Good one, Flick. Oh, 
Well, you couldn't get scarier than country people who believe in bunyips. That reminds me. I'd better see if Steve's OK. He believes in vampire koalas. And that ends the tree's exciting histoire of how my great-grandpapa built Wackerville's combination swimming pool and sheep dip. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Simonovich, is the school going to celebrate Halloween this week? What do you mean, celebrate Halloween? Well, in Sydney, our school might make Halloween movies or hold a Halloween dance or have a Halloween costume day. Huh. Don't bring your big city ways to Wackerville, Jasmine. We don't celebrate Halloween here. Not even trick-or-treating? Especially <gasps> not trick-or-treating. <laughs> Ow! Trick-or-treating is a big city festival of greed and extortion. No, it's not. It's fun. And Halloween is superstitious claptrap. How can you accuse Halloween of being superstitious when Wackervillians <laughs> believe in a bunyip? I do not believe there is a bunyip in Wackerville. That's a relief, because I thought everyone... There is no Wackerville bunyip because my father killed the last one in 1937. Thanks for waiting for me to finish detention, Flick. It's OK. Martin and Buzzer wanted me to show you the shortcut to the barn. The nerve of Mrs Simonovich giving me a detention just because I said she wouldn't need a mask to go trick-or-treating. I wish she would change her mind about Halloween. Yeah, I'd love to go treat or tricking. Ah! Treat or trick, treat or trick. And as for Halloween being superstitious claptrap, what could be more superstitious than believing in bunyips? I can't believe that anyone still believes in them. <gasps> Infamous, mythical, and never before photographed Bunyip. And I've got it on videotape. We're seeing the back of our Bunyip, the bunny whack Nipville, the really whack Nipbun. We've seen, wait for it, the Wackerville Bunyip. And I'm going to believe that. Because I'm just a gullible country pumpkin. No, it's true. I saw it. Do you know what this means? That a city girl is just as gullible as us country kids? On the contrary. This city girl is not gullible because she's got cold, hard proof. Right. I'm going to tell my friend Steve the amazing news. I thought Steve was scared of monsters. Only monsters with wheels. Have you ever met this Steve? No. Has anyone? I don't think so. Why? No reason. OK, it's ready. Where's Buzzer? He's got to see this too. Who knows where Buzzer Buzzer's off to? Well, it's his loss. See what a big city girl can do with a little technology. Wow. It looks like you have got something. Think of the possibilities of what a real live bunyip in Wackerville means. Bunyip burgers? No, long-term bunyip research, a revolution in the understanding of Australia's fauna and, last but not least, a way to celebrate Halloween that's not a big city tradition. Kids could have bunyip parties, carve bunyips out of pumpkins and even dress up as bunyips. Absolutely not. No. Nine. Niet. Or to put it in plain English, no way, Jose. OK. Then call it Bunyip Day. It'd be a local tradition and it wouldn't be superstitious claptrap because the Wackerville Bunyip is real. It is not. 
I told you my father killed the last one in 1937. Well, obviously he didn't. Ow! Are you calling my papa a liar? Are you saying he deceived the whole town when he said he killed the last bunyip? Well, not exactly. There will be no Halloween or Bunyip Day celebrations in Wackerville this weekend. Comprende! How dare Mrs. Simonovich ban Halloween and not believe me about the Bunyip? She's the monster. Or maybe you should have suggested Simonovich Day instead. Yeah, dudes could dress up as Mrs. Simonovich and tell scary Simonovich stories. Build a statue to Mrs. Simonovich. It will become a tourist attraction. Wackerville, the home of the Simonovich monster. That's it. We were only joking about the statue. No, I've been talking to the wrong person. I need someone who can think big. Who thinks big in Wackerville? Mr. Burgoyne? You, you, you dare to interrupt me, the busiest, busiest man in Wackerville? This is important. What could be more important than designing Wackerville's newest tourist attraction? The Bootlace Museum. A wonderland of bootlacery from all over the world. What if I tell you the Wackerville Bunyip exists? Then I'd say you were pulling one of your juvenile pranks in an attempt to mock me, Wackerville, and possibly... The Bootlace Museum. But what if I said I had proof? Then I'd say forget the museum. A local bunyip would be huge. Think of the tourist possibilities. The town could have a, a big bunyip to go with the big boot. No, the big bunyip could be wearing the big boot. Talk about big bucks. Yes. And some of the money could be used to protect its habitat and for further bunyip research. It'll be win-win. Wait, wait, we, we need some sort of marketing hook. Hmm, you're right. I know. What about bunyip day on Halloween? When everyone dresses up as bunyips and goes bunyip trick-or-treating? That's a great idea. Wait a minute, I haven't seen this proof of yours yet. What exactly have you got? <clears throat> I don't know. This could be camera tricks. I'm not some gullible country hick. I need cold, hard, verifiable proof. This is where the bunyip jumped out of the bushes and knocked Flick and me over. Wow, they look like bunyip prints, all right. That thing must be huge. <gasps> And you say the bunyip was right to her here? Oh, yes. It was terrifying. OK. Uh, you've convinced me. The Wackerville bunyip exists. Now, I'll make sure everyone in town knows about it. But right now, I've, I've got, uh, I've got a, an important business meeting to go to. See ya. Yes! I did it! <laughs> She comes now, the world's most famous wildlife photographer, who single-handedly found and captured on film the eighth wonder of this and any other world in the whole universe, the Wackerville Bunyip. <laughs> So, how did it go with Burgoyne? Great! He's going to make the bunyip famous so he gets tourists while we get to preserve the bunyip's habitat and celebrate Halloween as Bunyip Day. It's win-win-win! I don't know. Usually when Burgoyne is involved, it's lose-lose-lose with an extra lose thrown in for good measure. That's the trouble with you country people. You're such sceptics. See you this afternoon! So let's finally see this Steve. Flick, don't you think you're a bit old to be having imaginary friends? Steve is not menagerie. He's real. Then where is he? He must be hiding. Steve's very shy. 
Flick, it's important as you get older not to believe in things that don't exist. But Steve does exist! <laughs> Dude is papering the town with this heavy confetti about the big yip. See, I told you Burgoyne would tell the whole town the bunyip exists. And he's going to prove it by quote, capturing this fearsome beast and putting it on display in a cage that will be exhibited around the world. Oh no! What have I done? <gasps> I'm sorry. I didn't know Burgoyne would do this to you. Once and for all, that my dear papa was lying about killing the last bunyip. Oh, the shame, the humiliation. <laughs> but Mr. Burgoyne hasn't caught the bunyip yet. You're right. And maybe he never will. If I can get to the bunyip first. Tea, crazy, eh? You'd get more of it, darling, if you used less sugar. Enough with the tea party. We're supposed to be thinking of ways to save the bunyip. Don't fret, pet. The old whackable bunyip has survived for hundreds of years, and it'll take more than Burgoyne to catch it. Can't you guys think of something? Chill out, dude. Yeah, I'm sure a big, scary, man-eating monster can take care of himself. Uh, itself. The bunyip might be a big, scary, man-eating monster, but like sharks and crocodiles, it deserves to be protected. Has anyone seen Flick lately? Yep. Little dude went to hang with Steve in the scrub. Steve? But Steve doesn't exist! So? So the big, scary, man-eating bunyip does, and he's out in the scrub that Flick is hanging in. <gasps> we have to find Flick before the bunyip does. 99, 18, 100! Coming, Steve, ready or not! I know where you are! My papa taught me how to use his bunyip hunting weapons, and as soon as I have that creature in my sights... Bang! Au revoir, bunyip! I heard something coming from over there. I found you, Steve! Yay! Mm. <gasps> ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like a shot! Burgoyne! Whoa! The Burgomeister is packing heat! Heavy! Oh no! Oh. Flick, come back! It's not safe! Oh. Flick! What? Let me out! I don't want to be put on display around the world! I'm not an animal! One of Burgoyne's bunyip traps! Oh, you're safe! Get away from my trap! You're contaminating expensive equipment with a little girl. Where you belong? Oh, my net! You've got no right to catch that bunyip. Leave the poor, defenceless animal alone. Animal? The bunyip's not an animal, it's a gold mine. <laughs> now get out of here. I've covered the area in senses, tripwire, traps. Not a thing can move in here that I don't know about. The bunyip is as good as mine, and there's not a thing that you can do about it. 
the poor bunyip is in big trouble! So, Steve, he's still out there playing hide and seek! But there's no way we can get the bunyip out. Now the burgon has the area wired. Well, did you see those hench dudes? Seriously buff! I've got it! If Burgoyne wants the bunyip so badly, we'll just have to give it to him! Hmm. Where is this monster? Try a different location. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You'd think something as big as a bunyip would show up somewhere. Nothing, nothing. Bingo! That must be our bunyip! To the riverbed, Otto! This is for Papa! What do you think you're doing to my bunyip, Simonovich? Uh, uh, if you harm a hair on its million dollar hide, I'll sue you for every pathetic penny you've got. She wasn't going to shoot! <laughs> Righteous disguise, hey dude! Yes! Where's my bunyip? There is no bunyip. Mrs. Simonovich's father killed the last one 70 years ago. Isn't that right, Mrs. Simonovich? Uh, y yes. Everybody knows that. I knew this was some sort of prank. Seize her and throw her in the cage to teach her a lesson. Wait! It's not a prank! Mrs. Simonovich and I are reenacting the slaying of the bunyip by her dad. What? Yeah. It's a new Wackerville tradition called Bunyip Day. People dress up as hunters or bunyips and then go door to door collecting payment or treats for killing the bunyip. Of all them. You don't think Mrs. Simonovich would be fooled by such an obviously fake bunyip costume as this, do you? Oh, yes. Of course. We're celebrating Bunyip Day. That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. I don't know. It could be a big money spinner. Think of the Bunyip Day decorations, the Bunyip Day costumes, the Bunyip Day tourists. That's the greatest idea I've ever heard. Otto, back to the boot factory. We're going to start making Bunyip merchandise immediately. Bunyip Day is a magnificent way to celebrate my father killing that terrible Bunyip. I want to go as a hunter. Don't be absurd. You can't go as my father. You're my granddaughter. You'll go as a Bunyip and like it. A Bunyip? We did it! We not only saved the Wackerville Bunyip, but we get to celebrate Halloween after all. The Wackerville Bunyip was never in any trouble, Jazz. What are you... By the way... Where is the little dude? 